everybody and welcome back to Sam Who Can't or Can. Now today's going to be a special episode for everybody out there so put on your overhauls, tighten up those britches and let's get things rolling. Today we're going to be making a Redneck AC. Now Redneck AC is the height of Redneck Ingenuity and this, th this little buddy right here is going to help out some friends of mine who are in desperate need of it in this nice wonderful heat index summer of a hundred and something. It's hot out there, folk. It's very hot out there. Now you darlings, just come on a little closer and let's get this, you know, let's get this thing on the road because I speak words today. All right, now that everybody's geared up and ready to go, get on in here and let's see what we need to make this redneck AC. Okay, so you're gonna need some duct tape, like actual silver duct tape or duct tape the gray stuff, not the silver stuff. There's a difference. Every redneck knows. Or you can use what we like to call the black stuff, which is gonna make sure this shit stays where I put it. We're gonna need some Velcro. Sorry, that was a sharp object that just rolled. We're gonna need some Velcro. Now, y'all can one use this and duct tape the rim after we're done and you put your stuff in there. However, this is gonna be a multi-use. So we have some pretty strong grip Velcro and I'll show you where we're gonna put this here in a minute. Need yourself a PVC pipe. You can do this is I think about approximately four inches. It is four inches. Um, this is a good little joiner thing. It is heavy. We're using a styrofoam container, so you might want a smaller pipe. However, I know exactly where this is going, and it's going to be able to be belted in. So we're safe with using a heavier pipe. The threading will come in use. Then you're going to need to get yourself an X-Acto blade or some sharp pointy object. I'm sure you rednecks have those out there somewhere, everywhere. Uh, which is why I kind of winced because the X-Acto knife rolled and it's not covered. Which always make sure kids don't cut with sharp objects without parental consent. I don't care how redneck and hillbilly you are. Mama said I could is not a good reason to do it. You're going to need yourself a mark stick. I got a little marker here. We're going to use that to mark places of things. And then you're going to need to get yourself a fan. Or as we like to call it in my neck of the woods, a homemade twirly bird. So, this thing right here is actually going to go on top of the most ultimate item, the styrofoam cooler and or plastic cooler if you have the power tools and know how to do it with under parental supervision. Under parental supervision to chop up one of them heavy plastic things. But I don't have the tools nor the parental supervision to do that. So this thing's actually going to sit on top of this. We're going to put a hole in the side of it. We're going to stick the pipe in it. We're going to tape everything down. We're going to put gallons, gallons, like a milk gallon jug filled with ice water. Literally filled it, put it in the freezer, it froze. We're gonna stick those in there, put the fan in, plug the fan in, it blows cold air, comes out, you have yourself a genuine redneck ingenuity made AC unit. So now we're gonna get to doing this thing. It's not gonna take long. This stuff does not take long to do, does not take a lot of money to make, and it actually works, believe it or not. Alrighty, so. Let's make sure Sam doesn't screw this up, because isn't that the fun of this game show? Sam can or can't. <coughs> and I was hoping this would come off so I wouldn't have to hold this blasted thing, but it looks like I'm going to have to hold the blasted thing. So this right here, just a little foam cooler that y'all take on your boats and hide and have and forever and ever go get one out of grandpappy's closet. We had to go buy this new at a store because I don't have grandpappy's closet. Uh, First things first, work in separate parts and be smart because you're playing with sharp objects. Now, I don't want to hold the fan this high. This is going to be set aside for later. This is going to be set aside for later. This is going to be set aside for a moment. Lid. Fan. Marker. Marker. Mark it. I know y'all think you can eyeball this shit, but then you have to go buy another cooler when you fuck up three times. So listen here, Joe, Bob, and Billy Joe. Mark it. Marker. Marker. Center of the lid. We're marking to here. I want to go in kind of at an angle. This is going to be fun. I didn't realize this was domed. So we're going to kind of go in at an angle and we're going to mark it. And I'm actually going to start a little bit 
smaller than my hole since I'm kind of elbowing this thing everywhere. Hence why we have a marker. Because I only want to put about this much or less of the fan into it. I need as much air flowing through here to go into the thing as I can get. Now do not make fun of me for my circle. I know some of y'all out there are going to make fun of me for my circle. I cannot do perfect circles. Leave me alone. So straighten this crap up just here a little bit. Smidging this one out here where I had a divot. Come back over here where we had a wobbly gook. And that's our circle. Now we're going to start smaller than the circle we made just in case somebody didn't mark it correctly. That way, you, you, if you mess up small, you can always cut more off. If you mess up big, okay. So we're gonna mark it smaller, that way we can make it bigger. You cannot, and I don't care who tells you this, do not listen to your cousin Ricky who told you that once upon a time he could make styrofoam appear out of thin air. You cannot take the styrofoam back in, you're just gonna make the whole thing a mess. We want it as snug as possible so the tape just seals it instead of actually holding it together because it's styrofoam. It's a pain in the butt stuff to work with and I hate using this stuff. I don't have power tools nor parental permission from Kendra. So we're gonna come in here. You can use scissors if you want. This will work faster for me. Okay, come in here cut out part of this hole. Now I'm going small. You will see me missing my mark by mile. And I'm doing that so I can pop this piece off and shape it. Styrofoam is really easy to cut. Keep that in mind, folks. Really easy to cut. But be careful because if you break it, that's a whole other thing entirely. Because breaking it will leave cracks in the roof, and that's what you, or the cracks in the lid. You don't want cracks in the lid because that just means more tape. And I know some of y'all are tape fiends, but that does not mean that you need to get your tape fiend butt in my project. See? Hole. I made a hole. That's what our goal is, is to make a hole. We made a hole. Now we take the fan. Not big enough. So we make the hole bigger. I'm gonna get closer to my line this time since I actually have more control and that is the reason why I went in and made a small hole first. So I can actually saw away chunks of this crap. Instead of having to worry about cutting out one perfect hole. Now if y'all wanna get your machismo on and try to make the full hole cut in one go, go you. I know I make mistakes. That's why this show is called Sam Can't or Can and no Kendra. I was not about ready to stab myself. I saw that face. I can't keep an accent if you mess me up. I'm not crying. I'm trying very hard not to laugh right now. This is not Sam Can Keep a Straight Face channel. But if you wheedle it away in chunks, it makes your life so much easier. And you can always stabilize it if you need to. So, hole, bam, still too small. So my line was actually close to the truth and right. That was the first time in forever. For the first time in forever, I'm gonna make an AC. Well, not technically not the first. I'd say the first time in forever I'd sing, but y'all have seen me do this too much. And I'm sure somebody out there on the Facebook and the YouTube are gonna have a better way to cut styrofoam than an X-Acto knife, but I don't have a lot of options here. And I'm banned from scissors at the moment. And no, I'm not telling y'all why. It's embarrassing. Which is why Kendra thought I stabbed myself. I swear to God, Kendra, if you start laughing, I'm gonna lose it. No, I went above my line. Damn it.
Bam. Almost there. So my line was correct and I need to go straight to my line. But y'all never know, you might have made a bad line. That's why we start small first. Start small, make bigger. And don't cut towards yourself like I am. I have been using X-Acto knives for years. If you have never used an X-Acto knife before, do not cut towards yourself. They are very sharp razor blades. But a lot of the stuff that I used to work on used to be small stuff, so I had to cut towards myself all the time, so I've gotten very good at this. Inset this side just a little bit more. Other than that, I'm a little bit over, but I'm close to where I want to be because right at this ridge is basically where I'm aiming for or a little bit below. So I just need to carve out a little bit more right here and a little bit more on that side, and I think I'm good. So we're going to freehand it and hope we don't destroy this thing. This is where working small comes into effect. Don't take out big chunks. All right, let's size this thing again. Because of how this stupid thing divots on the sides right here, as long as I have ledge resting right here and on the back side, I'm good. I just needed that to be flat with the top of the lid as my hand keeps popping it back out. But y'all can see right here that I've got enough grip still to hold and I can tape all that crap up. So, next step, let's get rid of the styrofoam. Y'all need to fill in this part, it's just trash can. All right. I do not need my sharp pointy knife for a few minutes. So I'm gonna set that off to the side so I don't hurt myself. We're gonna get our lid. Jesus Christ, that scared me. I hurt my stove. Damn you plate. This is a riddle. It'll live. Be careful with the tape of doom and wonder and joy. So, I put this bad boy like I so, okay? I'm gonna move this so it's out of my way. I'm actually going to clip this and this so it's out of my way. As you can see, if you come on in a little bit closer, this dang near perfect fit, dang near. A little bit of a gap on one side, but I can wiggle it, and I'm gonna take that. So I'm not too worried about the wobble. I still just need to make sure that I get air, so I'm gonna try not to tape it above this black line right here. I'm gonna try. I make no guarantees because this tape is super sticky, which is why we're using it. So I'm sticking the tape to the plastic on that ledge that I want it on. And then I'm literally just going from that down to wherever the tape is going to stick. Try to make this as airtight as possible because the less seepage you have, the better cool you will have. And you can start in smaller strips of tape if you would like. Like I said, come right up here to that ledge. I'm gonna work my way over pinching it a little bit. You're gonna kind of pleat it a little bit if you can. It does not need to be pretty. If you want to make it pretty, then take longer to make this than I'm doing right now because I'm tired and they need it. It's been a long day. Now 
now we're going to turn. Same thing. Come in here, pleat it a little bit. On either side, we're sticking to that one ledge. And then stick her down, making sure we have as little leakage as possible. And we're going to turn. Are you starting to see the deviousness of this fan? This fan is going to pump air straight into two ice chunks, basically ice chunks. And those two ice chunks are going to shoot air off to the side, so it's going to basically fast cool the air and shoot it back out. Which is the point of an air conditioning unit. Now, it's kind of similar to how a swamp cooler works. And for those who do not know what a swamp cooler is, you need to Google it. But it's basically a cold water run air conditioning unit where the air blows over the frozen pipes and shoots the water out. And that is how it cools. Swamp coolers are still around, they're still a thing, they're just not as popular as they used to be because now we have central heating and air, which I have at my house, and I love. make sure that every seam is covered so that any holes I made are covered so that that edge is covered all the way around which it is I have one little tiny spot right here I didn't get I can tear me off a little tiny piece of tape pop that bad boy right over there you can do a patch job like I said this isn't supposed to be pretty and if you want it pretty paint it and color it after you do the dirty work welcome to my fan now if you wanted to, and I am not going to, because I'm not worried about this side of it, nobody's gonna see this side of it, and it's already sealed from this side. But if you want to, you can put some more tape around this edge right here to seal it up. But, sorry. Put some more tape around this edge right here, because I know which direction I'm pointing, and you can seal it up. However, I'm not actually going to do that, as I do believe that this tape job is good enough, and it covers up all of my seams and everything. The lid has been nearly completed. I want to reuse this. Sometimes people just put this on here, tape it in one use only. If you're doing camping for one night or whatever you want to do. This is going to be reused until it cannot be reused again. So we're going to take Velcro. And I need my scissors. There they are. Am I allowed to use these? Okay, I'm going to use them anyway. I'm going to take Velcro. I'm going to, this is, has a removable sticky side so it will stick to whatever I'm doing and it's going to be just about as tough as this tape. So I'm just going to take two pieces of Velcro. They do not need to be big for me. I'm going to take a couple of pieces of Velcro and these are going to go on right here and the same on the other side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fuzzy side, which sticks to it, cut a longer piece and meet it end to end because we're going to put another piece right here so that way it's Velcro top and bottom and they can Velcro the lid onto the thing just in case it even decides it wants to tend to fall off or in case somebody's an idiot and knocks it over, which is the more likely situation. I can't get the back to peel off. Dag nabbit. Come on! There we go. Got the back to peel off. So we're going to stick that one right there. Move this bad boy. Stick this next one. Ha ha! I got it. Yeah! Yeah! Stick that next one right of there. Perfect. My lid is done. So we're going to set that off to the side safely. Over there. Sorry. <clears throat> Over there. Let that stick to my kit. If you hadn't noticed, my handy dandy crafters kit is sitting out here with me where I got my very sharp knife from. Now, because there will be two gallons of frozen water in here, two gallons, we're putting in a four inch PVC pipe on the side of this. 
I do not want this sticking too far out inside the cooler. And because it's going to be two gallons of ice, which weighs more than two gallons of liquid, I'm not worried about how heavy this thing is. The lid is going to add a little weight to it, the ice is going to add weight to it, and it will sit pretty just fine. But if you want to do smaller, uh, smaller PVC, you can do the smaller stuff or the lighter stuff or the smaller tubes. This is an actually a male joiner piece, um, so that's why this thing's so thick and so heavy. So, we're going to be right about there. I'm doing this higher up because this narrows down. If you look at it, it kind of, well, you can't see it from the inside, but you can see it from the outside. Notice how that kind of tapers down, kind of forms a V. It's going to be smaller on the bottom than it will be on the top. So I can actually pop this bad boy probably right about here. Once again, we're going to use our nifty difty marker. If I can find it, there we go. And I want this about center. I do not need to put it off to a side or do any fancy shit unless you want to and you have more than one tube. So we're just going to go around this thing because it's so much easier. Like so. And I got my circle to play with. Now, once again, we're going to start smaller than the circle because the width of this is so big and I don't want this to just fall in. We might wind up taping the back side of this thing just because of how heavy it is. So I need my very sharp tool again. I'm going to cut this a little bit differently than I cut the top part. Just because I don't want to hurt the star so more than I have to. I just made a cross and cut a circle that knocked out all the pieces. Got four little pizza slices right there. That is a fast way to do a side circle into anything. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit thick, so I want to cut it a little bit small and kind of screw that plastic piece in. It's not going to stay screwed. It's going to strip out really fast, but it will help grip it while I am taping it and get it where I want it to be. That's the other reason why we're screwing just a hair smaller. We might actually have to go a little bit bigger, but we'll see. Now, note here, always be careful to hold your styrofoam in the smallest part. And I'm not really resting my weight on here. I just got my hands down here to hold the sides. But my main grip is right here so I don't break this upper lip of styrofoam because if you do, you're going to have to take that whole hot mess. I'm starting to screw it in a little bit and try to get it as level as possible and actually screw this sucker in here. Now like I said before, the styrofoam is not another piece of plastic that's going to screw correctly, but it will give me enough of a grip to start out with so I can actually tape up part of this side without having too much of, a v or too much of an issue because of how tight I got this to fit. That is very important, especially if you're working with anything that screws in styrofoam. It's not perfect, it will not stay. You have to tape it. But if you don't tape it and leave it, you can leave it screwed in for just a hair, probably a couple days, before that styrofoam starts to loosen. But once condensation starts inside the styrofoam, your ass better be grateful you have tape on there. So, let's get to taping. Now on this one, I'm creasing the tape 
And I'm kind of going in there at a weird angle. Let's do this a little bit just on the things. Because the threads are, this is right where your threads are going to become detrimental to you. So you want to, that's why I screwed it in. Because we don't want too much air. I'm going to have to come back in here and retape in two or three other places. But the goal is just to create that seal and to create that staying power so not we're not losing that cool air that we're trying to get. I'm also doing these in smaller chunks than I usually would because of how bendy this pipe is. And I want to make sure I don't have to go back and retake too damn much. Nothing is perfect. Don't you ever dare think that this is going to turn out like a five star craft that's going to win you awards at craft fair. This is not a perfect piece of crafting. This is a craft of necessity. This is a craft that we need to make a spot cooler for people who are dealing with high heat indexes in the summertime. This is not a award winning craft, unless you're talking about the redneck ingenuity behind it and no, this was not my idea. Google it. But I have known about the redneck AC for a long time like childhood long time, before the internet long time. Well, okay, the internet was around, but we didn't use it because we didn't really know what it was. It was that there legend stuff. The internet. You have a place that you can go online and look shit up, it's like a Google, or it's like a Britannia. Encyclopedia Britannia. Except you can like click, 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 and it's there, and there's pictures. There's so many beautiful pictures on the internet. So many disturbing ones as well. I'll never understand some of you people. And I'm not talking about the foot crowd. I get the foot crowd. I'm talking about other people. Stuffed animals. is you can also come in here and kind of make a slit so you can bend this better. I'm going to do this on some of the ones that are sticking up before I go back in and do the professional slitting, which I will do here in a minute. But right now, I'm trying to get this down as much as possible in so much my ability. Now when I talk about slitting, you see how this, bat or this tape right here sticks up? You can actually stick something back in there. Take your craft knife. This is why I suggest an exacto. Poke it, slit it. What you can do is you can now freely bend that tape in one direction or the other, and you can always come back and slit it just a little bit more. So this right here, it's not something I should have been doing the whole time. This is something I always go back and do because I want as much covered as possible before I start cutting into that tape. And I'm just doing it on pieces that aren't sticking down yet. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and do a real slit job all over the place. In a second, another I need first. If I can rip this without going too far on the side, there we go. instead of doing a slit job. It looks a little bit easier. Last type, last tape I worked with on this stuff, because I've made one of these before, last tape I worked with was not as user friendly as this black tape is. I kind of like this black tape more than I thought I would. kind of doubling up on those down that stuff so that we're not going to move. I don't want this thing to move. 
That is my goal. And the more bracing I can do on this side, the better, because inside this thing's gonna be a wet mess once we get that cold water in there and the condensation. Now I'm just gonna slip job this bad boy right here, kinda go up, and I can tuck that one up. Kinda like those knuckle band-aids that you get that are split so you can move, wrap it around your finger better. And one more bad boy right here, couple more slits, and we're ready to do the inside. Oop, didn't need one on that side, cool. So, as you can see, we've taped everything up right there. There is no light to be had at all because we screwed it in and then taped it. So, all I'm going to do on this side is put some taping right around this part, but I do not want to cover this hole. This may take a minute. She may just fast forward this. I think we're going to use smaller strips like I was doing a minute ago. And we're just making this airtight. So, there we go. Now, I warned you, it's top heavy. I expected this. So we're just gonna leave it on its side where it wants to stay. Now here, cut ourselves a couple more Velcro pieces. These ones can be a little bigger if you'd like. They don't need to be though. Doesn't matter if they're pretty or even. If you want to make them a pretty or even, that's your choice. I'm tired. Too tired for pretty or even. And this doesn't need to be pretty, as I told everybody earlier. So we're going to put these ones smack dab right here on the handles. Flip that bad boy around. I can't get the stupid backing off. Stupid. Stupid, sorry, son of a biscuit eating Marflava's dog, Martha. There was a PBS show about Martha. Martha the talking dog. Martha speaks. Don't ask me how I know this. All right, we're gonna place that bad boy right there. Now, I need the lid. Camera lid. Thank you, camera. So I'm going to put that lid right on here, okay? Told you, top would help. I know what I'm talking about, contrary to popular belief. Now, I do not need all of this wrapped up together, but it's going to be all wrapped up together. Let's separate this out real quick. Oh, you're going to be a pain in my ass. Let's do it this way. I don't want to have to cut and waste. So what we're going to do, we're going to smack that bad boy right here. We're going to come back down right here. And I'm going to cut right below the handle. Bam. That right there, Velcro's that on, keeps that where it needs to be. Same thing right here. I'm always leaving a lead right there. And I'm actually going to put some fabric on the back of this. Not that it needs to look pretty. It's just so that way they don't pull off the sticky and stick it to themselves. Put that bad boy right there, put that bad boy right there, cut a little bit below it, bam. Ladies and gentlemen, you put ice in that and you have yourself a genuine redneck air conditioning unit. Thank you, I have been Sam, who can?